The world is on a mission to invest in renewable energies, go electric, and do anything we can to save the future of our planet. But China is so far ahead of everyone else, it will take the rest of the world decades to catch up. This is the blunt assessment of the New York Times, who recently published an article entitled, Can the World Make an Electric Car Battery Without China? This article concludes the Chinese are so far ahead mining rare minerals, training engineers, and building huge factories that the West realistically has no chance of competing with China in this industry. Truly, all roads, pun intended, lead directly through China. While China's lead in the production of EV batteries is important, there is something much more significant when we start to uncover just how dependent countries like the United States have become on China. From lithium to iron to uranium to cobalt, the United States government needs direct access to dozens of metals and minerals to fuel some of America's most precious assets, including fighter jets and military weapons. Without these resources, America's military won't be able to function. Let's take the metal cobalt, for example. 41% of the world's cobalt mining is owned by the Chinese. Once that cobalt is mined, it's sent directly to China, where 80% of the world's refined cobalt is produced. After refining, the cobalt is then used to make cathodes, which is basically the positive sign you see on the side of your battery. The cathode is the positive charge of electrons in a battery, and incredibly, 77% of the world's cathodes are made in China. Remarkably, there isn't a single cathode production facility located in the United States. Of course, you also need the negative charge in a battery. That's the minus sign you see on your battery is called an anode, and remarkably, 92% of the world's supply is made directly in China. Are you starting to see how important China has become to our global supply chain? By investing in these valuable industries for decades, China has positioned itself in a position of strength for the foreseeable future. And as this Business Insider article admits, there is one crucial industry where China is crushing America in the tech cold war batteries. And once again, this simple technology is a gateway to other critical technologies that will control the future of our planet. Tu Le, the founder of the consulting firm Sino Auto Insights, recently said, the danger is that we, the United States, won't have a domestic battery sector and we will totally in perpetuity, rely on China to build cells for us. Without the batteries to power the fleets of cheap electric vehicles, companies like GM and Ford run the risk of becoming regional players and losing their international status. In fact, we are already seeing a concession from one of America's most iconic car brands. Ford just announced its plans to scale back China investments amid EV competition from local rivals. Ford CEO Jim Farley warned investors there is no guarantee Western car makers could win against local Chinese brands. It's a smart decision from the Ford CEO, as frankly speaking, there is zero chance for these American car companies to beat out the competition in China. Ford operates eight factories in China through local joint ventures, but Ford vehicle sales in China fell below 500,000 units last year for the first time in over a decade. On the flip side, China's BYD has quickly become the nation's best-selling car brand for the first time, overtaking the top spot from Volkswagen. While Ford struggled to sell half a million cars in all of 2022, BYD sold over 427,000 electric vehicles in the first quarter of 2023 alone, capturing an incredible 38.8% of the entire EV market share in China. Many people didn't see this sudden increase in the Chinese auto industry coming. For example, Volkswagen was the number one selling car brand in China since since 2008 and looked primed to dominate the auto market for many years to come. China is an integral part to the German auto manufacturer's business, with 40% of all revenue for Volkswagen coming directly from China. But like most things in China, the vision and plan have been laid out years in advance. China first set out to dominate the battery industry in 2015, when the Chinese government laid out a plan to corner the market for key materials like lithium, cobalt, and nickel. But here is the brilliant strategy from China. None of these materials are sourced from within China. Instead, they are spread throughout the world and located in countries like Chile, Australia, Bolivia, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Congo's finance minister recently told Reuters the country expects to reach an agreement on a $6 billion infrastructure for minerals deal. The Chinese government would fund much needed roads and hospitals in exchange for a 68% stake in the country's largest copper and cobalt mine. This strategy might actually sound familiar, because it's the exact same blueprint that China uses with its Belt and Road Initiative. Launched in 2013, the BRI is now the world's largest trading network, and China has been investing in the extraction of these key materials while also building the factories for battery manufacturing. And here's the incredible statistic. 
From 2018 to the first half of 2021, China invested $4.3 billion in lithium mines internationally. And this is where the vulnerability of the United States and Western nations remains and why the future of the EV industry runs directly through China. As of right now, the United States has only one active lithium mine in the entire country, and we have yet to follow China's lead and build these crucial relationships with countries to access their lithium mines. Joe Biden has allocated $200 million through the Inflation Reduction Act to hopefully incentivize American firms to start producing batteries inside the U.S. But industry experts predict the U.S. won't be able to make a profitable battery until at least 2030. What this simply means is that for the foreseeable future, all EV manufacturers in the world will rely on China's battery technology. And this is the one area of the tech cold war that China will dominate in the future. If there's one thing I want you to remember from today's video, it's this. China 100% controls the future of the EV industry. There is no way anybody is going to become successful in electric vehicles without having some type of cooperation with China, either directly or indirectly. But with every challenge, there is an opportunity. And I want to share with you the sponsor of today's video, who is tied directly to North America's need for lithium and precious metals. The company is called FE Battery Metals. And if you're an investor, please pay attention to what I'm about to share, as this company is addressing the direct need of lithium for the North American market. Remember what I said earlier, there is only one active lithium mine in the United States, accounting for less than 1% of global supply. But FE Battery Metals is drilling in a promising region of Canada that is a hot zone for lithium mining, and the company could be in the right place at the right time. The stock ticker is FEMFF. And let me tell you more about my investing thesis. Many of you have seen in the past couple of weeks, I've been sharing some of the stocks I'm currently investing in as I'm constantly researching and studying the geopolitical trends that are changing our world in seeing what opportunities there are in the market. With governments around the world going green and investing in this EV revolution, lithium is going to be a major need in the future. Just look at this graph from Statista, which forecasts the need for lithium throughout 2030. As I've outlined in this video, China dominates the entire EV battery space. For the next seven to eight years, there is no chance for any EV company in the world to produce an affordable vehicle without the use of China's batteries. But the US wants to change that, and this is where an opportunity in the market presents itself. And here is why I like FE Battery Metals and why I think you should do your own due diligence and research more about this company. The most important part about mining is always location, and FE Battery Metals is actively mining several high quality mining sites in both Ontario and Quebec, Canada. The hotspot for this drilling is in the Quebec Abitibi Lithium District. It's an attractive investment destination for lithium production due to the local infrastructure, access to skilled labor, and close proximity to high growth EV markets in both North America and Europe. Now, FE Battery Metals is a small company with a market cap around $16 million. And at the time of recording, the stock is trading around 38 cents, but this could go up when the company announces drilling results. Of course, there are no guarantees in mining, but the company is doing all the right steps for this potential to happen. For example, there is a very large Australian mining company in the region actively drilling, and there is an old adage in mining that goes, the best place to look for a mine is right next to a mine. And that is exactly what FE Battery Metals is doing. They are actively buying up as much land as they can next to this bigger mining company and drilling and exploring in hopes of finding good results and being acquired by the larger company. In fact, this is the blueprint for many successful smaller mining companies, and it's the same game plan here. The second reason I like this opportunity in the mining space is the support from the government. The Quebec government is fully behind the mining industry and is targeting $7 billion in private and public investment in the lithium battery sector during this decade, with companies like BASF and General Motors already announcing new facilities in the region. Finally, the third and final reason I like FE Battery Metals is the management team in place. With small mining companies, it's imperative to have a sound management team, and FE Battery Metals is fortunate to have Jody Gibson as the company's director and geologist. In 2020, Mr. Gibson was recognized as the Yukon Prospector of the Year. He previously was the project manager for
for Underworld Resources Incorporated, which discovered gold deposits that were sold to Kinross Gold for over $139 million. Once again, let me highlight why the need for lithium is so high and why there is an opportunity in the market. The US government wants to end gas-powered vehicle purchases by 2035, and large auto manufacturers are starting to realize they could become vulnerable to supply chain issues if they don't have access to these valuable minerals like lithium. That's why it was major news earlier this year when General Motors invested $650 million in lithium mining to lock down these important EV materials. This is what happens when there is a large need in the market. Just look at the minerals needed to make an EV car. Copper, nickel, graphite, cobalt, and of course, lithium. Mining is going to be an important part of our world's future. But as always, please do your own due diligence and research before investing in any company. And to help you with that, I'm going to include the investor deck, website, and stock ticker for FE Battery Metals down in the description below. The future for electric vehicles remains bright, and in fact, I bought my first electric car last year and am enjoying the benefits of going green. But I also realized this entire effort to go electric wouldn't be possible if not for China. Everyone, thank you so much for spending time with me today here on YouTube. And again, I thank you all for your amazing continued support. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, drop me a comment down below, and I look forward to seeing you all in our next video soon.